Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and today we're going to explore the top five most expensive salvage cars to ever sell in history. These are not cars that were totaled and then rebuilt and resold. These are going to be cars that were totaled and being offered for sale in wreck condition by insurance companies at salvage auctions. The website I'm doing all my research on today is autoauctions.io. We're going to use it because it gives you the auction sale data, including the price the car sold for originally. Now, before we get to number five on the list, we have to talk about an honorable mention. That's this 2005 Saline S7. This is literally the sixth most expensive car to ever sell at a salvage auction, but it didn't make the list for two reasons. Number one, it wasn't offered for sale by an insurance company. And number two, it actually retained a clean title. This could be due to a number of reasons, but likely the person that was responsible for the accident or the damage on this car opted to not run it through insurance and just sell it through this auction or sell it to someone independently who's now using the salvage auto auction to sell the Saline S7. The Saline S7 was a car that in 2005 came with 750 horsepower and had a 248 mile per hour top speed. It was over $100,000 less than the Ferrari Enzo at $555,000 and was hand built here in America. Now since the body is completely made out of carbon fiber, I don't know a proper way of actually repairing the damage we see here in the photos. But nonetheless, with the parts on this car, with the rest of the car being in fairly good condition, having that beautiful interior and only a couple thousand miles on the clock, this Saline S7 sold for $241,000. Jumping right in to number five on our list of most expensive salvage cars ever is a 2016 Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead. These cars retail for over $500,000 brand new. This one in particular was $500,000 in fifty thousand dollars when it was brand new and i found that out because i found the original sale listing at gold coast auto gallery also better known as bentley gold coast or lamborghini gold coast this is the same dealership tyler hoover bought his earlier model rolls royce phantom at and this is a dealership with many high-end exotics and luxury cars now when this car was offered for sale at bentley gold coast we could see right here it had 135 miles on it in the listing here it was originally at copart the car only had 177 miles on it less than 50 miles off of bentley gold coast lot and the car was completely totaled now we take a first look at these photos it seems to me that this car was professionally disassembled at a body shop now i talk about this a lot in the videos that i make i like to buy cars that were professionally disassembled at a body shop because it means that the insurance company took a second look at the car before completely writing it off as a total loss and in the case with this rolls we even see that it comes with a lot of the parts that were taken off of the car now in this photo right here, there is one thing that is a little bit strange to me. It looks like part of the structural component was rough cut. And I'm not very familiar with the structure of a Rolls Royce Phantom, but it doesn't look factory to me. Otherwise with such low miles, basically a brand new car, damage that doesn't look like anything was severely structurally damaged and a sale price of $243,000. I would have to guess that this car will be professionally rebuilt and resold to somebody at some point. Now number four on our list is a car that's no stranger to this channel. It's the 2017 Lamborghini Aventador SV. I actually did a video on this car because it sold for $316,000. Not only that, it had 73 miles on it when it was completely obliterated. For a more comprehensive look on this Aventador SV, you can click the link above. But this car has a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage! I'm not sure why anyone would attempt to rebuild it. However, if they're able and successful, you've got a car that originally retailed at $660,000. So they really only paid about half that. It's a matter of how much it would cost to really put this thing back together and whether you could do it right. And these supercars have materials like carbon fiber, aluminum, and high strength steels that are very difficult, if not impossible, in certain scenarios to repair. Now, being that this is the Super Veloce, the engine and transmission alone are probably worth six figures in themselves. And again, each little component in this car, even used, which they're barely even used with 73 miles on it, 
are worth a substantial amount of money. Hopefully in the near future, this Aventador or some of its parts will surface and we'll know exactly what happened with the $316,000 salvage Aventador SV. The next car on our list is a very famous supercar or infamous supercar for being completely out of control. The 2005 Porsche Carrera GT in this yellow color, a color that you do not see a lot. Usually you see that silver Carrera GT and I've seen a few black ones, but never a yellow one, especially in person. I specifically remember the Top Gear episodes where Jeremy Clarkson was almost drifting this car around the track. He even described the car's actions as a bit unruly. Jeremy Clarkson wasn't the only one to have a tough time wrangling the Carrera GT. In a clip a little while later, Jay Leno lost control while driving his Carrera GT 190 miles an hour at Talladega. Luckily, neither him nor the car were hurt in that instance, but of course, of course, we remember the fatal crash involving Paul Walker and his friend Roger Rodas in their Carrera GT. That wasn't the only fatal incident involving a Carrera GT. In 2006, there's a documented case at California Speedway. Porsche was taken to court in both of these cases, with the plaintiff alleging that the Carrera GT is unsafe for the road. And in both cases, Porsche settled out of court. Even though it looks like there's a lot of the car in place, almost every single panel is damaged. We got that crack on the front bumper. We've got the crack on the front fender. The pillars where the windshield mounts into, that's cracked. The windshield is completely shattered. Exotic car windshields, extremely expensive. Supercar windshields, even more expensive. The rear bumper is all cracked up. The rocker panel on the opposite side, the roof panels are cracked up. So the impact on this car must have been really severe. Now this car sold for $342,000 in this condition. And its original retail price was only $440,000, which is a great deal considering that they're trading near a million dollars today, a little bit under that million dollar mark. And with only a little over 6,000 miles on it, I can only hope somebody brings this Carrera GT back to life. But the one car I don't think they're bringing back to life anytime soon, the 2015 Porsche 918 Spider. This is a car that came out retailed for almost $900,000, is now trading hands well over the million dollar mark and this car was totaled with only 92 miles on it and it looks like basically an assemblage of parts the most fascinating pictures are these of the front end with that structure completely bent towards the driver's side being such a limited production car means that each part on this car is worth a lot in itself and that's likely why it sold close to half a million dollars. It's really neat in supercars since there's not a lot of space in the interior. You can see the door sill here actually houses an airbag and the airbag did deploy here on the passenger seat. Right here's the corner where the dash airbag deployed so pretty much every single airbag went off in this car as well. And one other really unique thing about this listing is that Copart where the car was sold usually only provides 10 photos. For this 918 Spider, they've actually provided 20 photos. So you really get a good look at the car, although I'm sure whoever bought this car before spending over $400,000 hopefully saw it in person. Our Porsche 918 had 20 photos, but what if I told you that the number one car on our list of the most expensive salvage cars ever sold at auction has 150 photos and they're gorgeous photos. They must have hired a professional photographer to market this car. It's of course the 2003 Ferrari Enzo. This is the supercar of my generation, the supercar that I grew up with. I remember when this car was announced, they were only making 399 of them, and it looked so radical from the Ferrari that I was used to seeing on posters and in magazines, the Ferrari 360. It almost looked strange, but the first time I saw one in person, I remember it so vividly. It was actually a yellow Ferrari Enzo belonging to Sergei Fedorov, who at the time played for the Detroit Red Wings, and it was parked at Jack Cauley Ferrari in Michigan. I don't even know if Jack Cauley Ferrari exists anymore. Now it's been a consistent theme. These are really limited production cars with the Ferrari Enzo likely being the most limited production out of all the cars we've seen today. Only 399. Of course, a few of them have been destroyed. All the car guys out there remember Eddie Griffin destroying a Ferrari Enzo at some promotion for like a really terrible movie. The final bid on this Ferrari Enzo was 706 
thousand dollars. Now think about this. In 2003, the Enzo MSRP'd for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So this car in this condition actually sold for more than it was new. But with prices eclipsing over two million dollars current day, it does make sense why it sold for so much. Using a standard Copart fees calculator makes just the fees alone on the Enzo over $14,000. Out of all the cars we've seen today, this one intrigues me without a doubt the most. I really, really wonder what the winning bidder has done or is doing with this car. The wrecked Ferrari Enzo reminds me of an episode of Gas Monkey Garage where they took that wrecked F40 and they completely rebuilt it. Somebody with the right skill, with the right materials, the right connections, could obviously fabricate a lot of things that need to go back in the right place on this car. However, with exotic parts being such a huge market in itself, Again, I really just wonder where this car is and what is being done with it. Now, it's impossible for me to include all 150 photos in this video of the Ferrari Enzo, but what you can do is click the link in the description box below to the Ferrari Enzo on autoauctions.io. Not only will you be able to see all 150 photos, you can see all the salvage auto auction details of the Ferrari Enzo and, of course, all the other cars that we checked out today. Now, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you very soon.